Welcome to another episode of Last Week Out. Oh yeah. It's a special one today, my people, mm-hmm. my followers, my motivation for all this that I do. It's you guys, it's you listeners out there that keep me going. <laughs> and we're fucking hashtag pandering to the inspiration today, dude. That's what it's fucking about. All right, dude. My name, uh-huh. okay, is Sir Chuddington the Third of Rumpshire. <laughs> Jeez, are you sure it's not Dale Denton? He's not like Dale Denton. <laughs> Hashtag Dent Dale Denton, dude. dude. Yeah, Dent List. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I'm so fucking excited right now. Let's get these introductions out of the fucking way. First, no, make off, sure you do plugs, though. Dude. I'm going to plug right now. Okay. Sissy Art. Mm hmm. S I S S Y A R T. Throw a at symbol in front of that, and you got the hottest, the dopest art in the city of Phoenix, mm. dude. I'm talking that kind. Of, I got a whole wall dedicated to her shit. Fucking wood burning, fucking cactuses, fucking renditions of <laughs> Newport shorts, dude. That fucking say last week out, dude. She does koozies, she, screen print. What do you want, dude? She's gonna do it, dude. She's gonna do it with flair and attitude and just. Fuck, dude. It's going to look so good, dude. You've seen it. He saw the wall, dude. He saw the wall, dude. He knows what he's talking (laughs) about, These bitches are so upset. There she is right there, dude. That's it. That's fucking it, dude. So, okay, I keep using... Okay, let me talk. Let me talk. Let me say something. Breathe, dude. I drank an iced Americano (laughs) with an extra shot of espresso. (laughs) Yeah, dude. Black. Okay. Straight up, because that's what you do when you drink coffee. Just drink it black. You just drink it black. You're not putting. I agree. No, you're not putting any cream in my coffee. I'm a. I'm a red blooded man. Don't even know what that means. But all I know is you got to drink your coffee straight, straight up, dude, with a little bit of ice. Dude. Dang, not even vegan coconut almond milk. Yeah, dude, not sometimes, bro. Agave? Sometimes, if I'm feeling myself, if I'm feeling extra vegan, I might throw a little something in there, yeah. do a little agave nectar, dude. Mm-hmm. Anyways, dude, DJ Devin Hancock provides that lo-fi banger dude <clears throat> throw an at sign in front of that dj devin hancock he's a producer a videographer he's just doing a bunch of dope shit man it's really cool so check him out on instagram um to my adjacent to my left sir anthony tatum first I'm mate dude cat. and he's actually a cat for y'all if you tuned in last week you know what the <laughs> flipping doopity doo day I'm talking about dude Damn. he's a feline dude and he's a good looking one at that too man and as always we got the one the only DJ Dr. Philanthropist David Slack dude dang it butt good big butt not only does he got a big <laughs> butt, but he's got a big mustache, too, to compliment the big butt, dude. And he's the one that does all this cool shit, man. He's the reason this podcast is even alive, dude. You For might sure. be, you might even be able to call him the captain, dude. Huh. What? And I might be okay with it, dude. <laughs> That's new That's from you? New. Yeah, because, dude, if it wasn't for him, this wouldn't happen. <laughs> He's got a C on his jersey then? Or dude, what? You know yeah. what? I'm passing the C over to you, dude. I'm just the guy that brings the flair and the comedy, dude. That's it, bro. You can That's have the it. A on your jersey. Damn, I'll take dude. A, dude. First mate over here, I'll take dude. the first mate. I'll take the first mate, dude. But I'm not I'm not scrubbing any ducks. I'll tell you that right now. Nope. That's not happening, dude. I think yeah. I'd really like that. Well, I know you would. I know you would, bud. We got a very special guest. Say that about all my guests, okay? Is that me? But this one's actually That's really me. special, dude. Um, so, dude. Where do you start, dude? Where do you start? I'm trying to think of like the stories of like when we were growing up. So I grew up with this guy. Let's okay? start with his name. His name's Mike <laughs> Kerr, dude. Oh, M- C-U-R-R? C-E-R-K-E-R-R. No, K- K-E-R-R. K E R. Can I can I plug my Instagram? Like Steve Kerr. Yeah, yeah dude, plug, plug your Instagram. that Instagram. Plug whatever you want. So plug it's, your sponsors. It's my all names right. smashed together. You know, M I K E R R zero four with the at symbol in front of it. Follow mm-hmm. me. It's cool. You know, I see some cool shit on there. Yeah, he's always doing cool shit, dude. So like I said, I grew up with this dude. We're fucking, we're Midwest boys, dude. Northwest Indiana. M Dub. Holler at me. You added on my <laughs> skin, dude. What up, dude? What up, bro? Um, and uh, I don't know, dude. He like travels the world. He's a professional paintballer. Um, 
just putting up good content all the time and just being a cool dude, man. And like, honestly being motivational, always talking about being in the gym, always talking about eating right, just being a good dude, man. And, and what's really cool about him is he's the first dude I ever smoked weed with. Right. You guys go back like barbershop chairs. Dude. Yeah. We go way back, dude. Way back. It was the, the blizzard of 2008, dude. Yeah. Smoking out of the pop can. You're smoking the, out of the pop can. Midwesterners dude. <laughs> call it pop. Yeah. We call it pop. We ain't drinking. It ain't soda. It's pop. Bro. Okay. It's pop, dude, and we I remember we blazed it up, dude, uh-huh. and we went to go walk. We were at some lady's house across the street, dude, and we go to walk across the street. The road is iced, bro. It's like the whole road is like an ice rink, dude, and he walks across it just fine like a fucking veteran hockey player, dude, barefoot, dude, not giving <laughs> a fuck, and then I try to walk across, but it just hit me. The marijuana has entered my system. Wait, was it both of your guys' first time smoking weed? Um, no, I probably smoked like once or twice before oh, that. We were just okay. getting into it, though. Mm-hmm, just getting into it. How old it, were you? I think it was like freshman year. Well, yeah, how old so you are? I was like 14 12, or 15. Oh, wow. That's older than yeah. I thought. Yeah, 14 yeah. or 15, I think. No, I feel like 13. I don't yeah, know. Maybe 13. I don't know, I don't know anything, dude. I don't really know, bro. I think I, the first time I smoked was, was like... Year 12. Yeah. yeah. I think the first time I smoked was like 8th grade summer though so going into freshman year yeah that's right that's when i that's, smoked weed that's, for the oh first yeah time. that, so that like, winter yeah. that, that yeah. winter so i feel like as kids we're like yo before we get into high school yeah i gotta fucking show up with this on my name badge <laughs> yeah. you know because and i smoked weed for the first time out of a uh dr pepper can yeah i yeah, was so 18 it was tw- there was what 27 flavors you were 18 years old 18 David? and uh the first thing i ever smoked out of was bible paper Oh dang! Whoa. Good. I hope it was the King James version of the Bible. There, no, bud. the the girl was from Xavier, the college preparatory place where it's a Catholic place, and she told us that it was from the index section of the Bible, so it wasn't as holy as the rest of the regular book. Well, you you can get them out like the notes page. Yeah, you know, they got the extra yeah. pages. Yeah, yeah. It's you important. just gotta like rip it all jaggedy <laughs> so it sticks. I'm done. Whoa, <laughs> man. We got a experience. couple of real Bible blazers out here yeah, right dude, now, we got, dude. Just, we're on fire for Jesus right now, dude. <laughs> so, all right, back to the story. He crosses the icy road. I can't. I'm paralyzed with fear. Uh-huh. It's 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, dude. And he's like, come on. And I'm like inching across the street on the ice, dude. I'm just like so scared I'm going to fall right. and eat shit. He's like, he's like laughing and fucking just, dude. And I finally made it across, dude. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember this, but we went back in your room. We started eating crackers. And then I was just laughing, bro. My mouth was so dry and I just spit crackers everywhere. Mm. Left them there. You remember Didn't that? Didn't clean it up. It sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was, I mean, uh, fucking Chad's on fire. You know what? I got to adjust. I got too much lumbar support going on right now. But uh, Chad, dude, I'm loving the energy right now, man. It's contagious. We're filming on a we're filming on a beautiful, what is it, Thursday evening right now. And we're normally up at uh, 8 a.m. on Sunday, so mm-hmm. we're all feeling good right now. I think we're a little more awake. Well, and this is the first time with full video. We've been experimenting with one camera, and then last episode was two cameras, and now we got everyone on video dude for in the first time five yeah. weeks we're gonna have eight cameras in this yeah. bitch at this rate dude mm-hmm. we're gonna be laced up every angle wow i know it'll Where be are they gonna go uh you on the vent probably and on the smoke detector we hope get a gopro on the fan dude we'll, have a, <laughs> we'll just have a drone flying yeah. right in the middle it's gonna be fucking Sweet. wild in here dude so mike mike kerr Welcome to the show, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. This you is know, sweet. is this the first podcast you've been on? Yeah, first podcast. Dude, what a blessing. Thank you yeah. for coming out, honestly. Yeah. It is a weird, uh, normal, well, it's a normal reaction to be a little bit apprehensive or anything like that about it, but what we're going to do is we're just going to ask you a couple of questions, kind of hear about your life a little bit, and we'll go from there. Cool? Cool. All right, so you're from Indiana. Yeah. Grew up out there. Yeah, I grew up in Dyer, Northwest Indiana. What was that like? Um, I don't know. Pretty boring. Why? Small it's, town. Yeah, small. I guess small town. It's cold a lot. I just feel like there's like eight months of winter, and there's no like mountains or you can't like go snowboarding. You gotta drive a few hours to get to like any kind of like winter sport type activity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of it's just like chilling at home. I don't know. What do you do as a kid? Was it hockey? Um, I played hockey when I was super young, but my dad worked a lot, so like. Actually, it was like St. John Ice was like the closest ice rink 
and uh they closed down so i played travel league for like not even a full season and then stopped playing hockey so uh s- skateboarding mostly i skateboard oh no yeah. shit yeah who's got, your hey, favorite we got skate- a midwest shredder on our hands right here who's dude. your favorite skate team when you were a kid it's got it's baker for sure baker yeah. see i baker, missed baker, baker, baker dude baker, 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 i missed baker. The, the 40 days and all of that i was uh i was back in the day i was a shorty skateboard oh, shorty's kid, old chadillac muscle oh huh? yeah dude peter smolik <laughs> town to win dude all we were right, fucking yeah. feeling it back in yeah. the day so you grew up skating yep normal skateboard mentality yeah you know just mobbing around with our friends was the Hit, first hitting the stairs was the, the first cd you ever owned oh man I like Green Day, Dookie. I don't know. I don't know. Damn, listen to I'm a lot of. Get mad when people have a decent one. I can't really hold that. Against I don't know. You. you know, I listen to a lot of classic rock as a kid because my dad did. So, but yeah, I don't know. I don't. It's, it would be hard to hard to uh, say what CD exactly. David, what was your first CD? I had three that I got at the same time. It was, okay, uh, okay. It was Nine Inch Nails further down the spiral, the Ooh. remix version of the Downward Spiral. It was Alanis Morissette, Jagged Little Pill. Oh wow! Man, he dude. knows him. He knows and, him to Oh shit! What was the third one? The third one is the embarrassing one. No, that was the Alanis Morissette one. Um, I'll think of it. Chad, Blink One Eighty Two Greatest Hits. Dude, what the fuck, dude? Greatest hits. I think my mm-hmm. first CD ever. I'm pretty sure it was Eagle Eye Cherry. Do any of you guys know Eagle Eye Cherry? Yeah. I do not. The say no, tonight. And wasn't born in 1972, oh, yeah. but you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah, no, dude, I was fun. just a young man just in his feelings, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Listening to some slow jams, dude. First CD. I think the second one was Chomba Wamba. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I don't even know dude, what that means, but it sounds so funny. Chomba Wamba. I get Wamba. knocked down. Yeah. I get up, I get oh, I have heard that. I yeah, it was it like... Called, I, I didn't know it was called Jamba Juice. Dude. Yeah, Chomba Wamba, Chumba dude. Wamba, yeah. Chumba Juice. So you grew up skateboarding, grew up... Uh, like uh, you say uh, punk sort of lifestyle yeah and then what when do you get out of Indiana how do you get out of there man how do you get out of the small town um, I lived there for like ever until I was like probably like 22 or 23 and I ended up moving down to uh, Florida I have a lot of family in Florida so I wanted to get out of Indiana it was just like over it yeah yeah do you got siblings out there um, yeah my, son, my brother he lives in like Lowell, which is right now. So I grew up with my brother. Uh-huh. He, we, whatever. Um, he's 10 years older than me. So he lives in like Lowell, which is like Indiana, but it's more like farmish area. Okay. More yeah, like country. Of nowhere. Yeah, middle of nowhere. Everyone has big trucks, like, you know, Chad's over here. And, uh, <laughs> and then I have an older sister who's 11 years older than me, and she lives in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we so, talked. We talked a little bit. We talked a little bit. Um, you know, you've gone through a lot. Yeah. Um, and we've talked about. Um, you know, you lost your mom freshman year in high school. Yep. Yep. Are you comfortable talking about that? Or? Yeah. Yeah. We could talk about it. All right. So. Um, yeah. So my my dad raised me mostly. Um, just because like whenever when my, him and my mom split up, whatever he won custody of me. Cause she was, you know, kind of into like drinking and drugs. I don't know like the full extent of it because I was younger. Yeah. But um, so I mostly lived with my dad, and I would see my mom. You know, she was always around, like around. So I'd see her quite often. But yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like I said, I don't even know like the full extent. Like we were close, but she ended up passing away, just like due to liver failure when Holy I was a shit. freshman. Yeah, just she was like super sick and stuff, just from the drugs and alcohol really yeah and then the whole thing for me leaving to florida and like being over indiana is uh my dad actually died in a work accident so he was a iron worker and yeah that was out of nowhere so that was like really rough and uh because we were so close i lived with my dad for forever and like i totally relied on him for everything you know what i mean like i so it was one day i woke up and like got a phone call and like I could just tell from the vibes it was bad like it was my uncle so my dad's older brother who lives in Florida yeah was like your dad's in the hospital he got hurt at work uh you gotta you gotta get over there so I just fucking like hopped in my car and I knew like you know it's iron working so there's not like a little you know you don't just kind of get hurt or some shit 
So I just was like flying down. Like I remember being in traffic, just flying down like the shoulder of the road, just like not giving a fuck about anything. And like I got there and there he was, you know, he died on the scene like immediately. So it was like super rough. You know, I was like, I don't know. I don't even know how you would explain it. You know what I mean? So like that's what kind of pushed me to like move out of Indiana and I moved to Florida because I had family down in Florida and I just didn't want to be around Indiana for a while and shit, you know. I frequent it now, nowadays, but after that, you know, because I was living in my dad's house, everything, so I was just like, peace out and left. Fuck, dude. Yeah. How old were you when your dad passed? I think I was like 20 or 21. Damn, dude. Yeah. A young man without folks. Yeah. Did you make any big mistakes coming up on the next couple of years? Um, I mean, not really. I mean, I, you know, I... You didn't just, just dive into toxic behavior, though, as a result? No, of not that. really. I mean, I've always, like, you know, partied and drank, and I still do. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I didn't, like, do nothing too wild or crazy. You know what I mean? I still, you know, honestly, probably paintball helped a lot because, like, you get to – I just kept playing paintball, and it's cool because you get to go out there. Once you're inside that netting, you know, you kind of forget about everything else. You get to get aggression out and – well, so that was definitely a, a positive thing for me doing that. And like, because at that point in time, I wasn't really skating much anymore. And I was just like full blown paintball. You know, I was trying to go pro in paintball. So, yeah. And Chad, I think in his introduction, made a comment. But for any of the listeners, uh, Mike Kerr is currently a professional paintball player. Yeah. So that's why I'm out here right now is uh, I play for Team Scottsdale Elevation. I just got on the team. A few weeks ago. So are you living out here now? No, I just flew out for practice. So there's a big tournament coming up in Philadelphia this next week. So they released the layout, which is like how the field's going to be set up. It's inflatable bunkers. So we set up what the tournament's going to be like, and then we practice it. So we get two weekends to play the layout before we go play the tournament. So I'm out here just grinding on the layout. So when you were a young kid, were you playing paintball back in the day? Yeah, I probably played, like, first time when I was, like, 13 at a birthday party, my homie Dom's birthday party, because his dad played, Uh had, like, all the sick gear and stuff. So we went out to uh, just try it, and I got my shit pushed in and got shot a lot, and I just, it was fun, so I kept coming back. You know, I would come back here and there because it's an expensive hobby to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd, like, whenever I got the chance, I was like, let's go play paintball, you know, and did it, and then just eventually got hooked, you know. Yeah, I had myself a little tip man back in the day. Yeah, I, had, dude. I had a spider. You know? Ooh, yeah. that's sick, dude. So yeah. you, I mean, what we we owe Dom a thank you, huh, for inviting you to the birthday party yeah, back exactly. when you were thirteen. Dom, oh, yeah. big shout outs, dude. Appreciate yeah. you, dude. For real, <laughs> I actually like just recently he like commented on one of my pictures. I'm like. Dude, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't... Who knows what I'd be doing? Fuck. That's fucking tight. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you played paintball. How do you get into the profession? Like, how does that even come about? Where do you frequent in order to become... Obviously, the courses, but, like, how do people get to know you? How do you separate yourself from the pack, dude? Um, so I grew up at Badlands, which is, like, a super legendary field. Okay. So it was, like, right... It's probably, like, 10 minutes from where I grew up. Yeah. So that was, like, the first place I played, and there was, like... You know, we're just playing like all like the woods, ball fields and like recreation, whatever they call it, open play. You know, you just get in groups with a bunch of people and go out there and play. Yeah. But, um, you know, on the other side, there's like that speed ball, like you mentioned earlier with inflatable bunkers and they have like a legendary pro team out there called Chicago Aftershock. Mm-hmm. So I just like seen that and was like, you know, watching it and just like seeing how intense and fucking violent and crazy it was you know it's not really violent and it's a safe no sport, i know what you're saying but man. yeah it was just like i'm like so how raw it was and was like man i want to do that you know what i mean like yeah. i want to you know you get to run up and bunker people and shoot them point blank and it just looks a lot, like a lot of fun so eventually just going i you know you basically just go over there and there's team practice and other teams and you'd kind of just stand around and like hope a team needs a guy and then eventually you know get your foot in the door and join a little local team or whatever and then it just keeps building up from there build momentum i'm yeah real quick as i'm so glad that we have video because chad has been struggling with his <laughs> yeah, microphone yeah, yeah. for the last 10 minutes i just kind of ignore <laughs> stuff man i looked over a couple of times i'm like oh i'm sure he'll get it sorted out eventually he's not he's not <laughs> So was there a big break? You got a big big break story for us as far as the paintball thing goes? Not really. So I just like 
played i've like made a local team at one point i tried to drag all my friends out there like robbie a few dudes mm -hmm. chad knows from when we were a kid yeah and i i think we played like one tournament and then they kind of like fell off robbie's like oh i don't want to wake up that early in the morning and yeah whatever and then yeah i just like would join teams and play local tournaments because like i said it's super expensive yeah. So how, could, do you, how do you get scouted for something like that? Like, who's who's out there looking at where are they looking at? Well, it's just like, all right, so like local teams, you know what I mean? It's just like people trying to get five guys to play, you know, on the weekends. So I started with that, and then there was this there was this Asian dude who helped me out a lot named Jeff. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to him. Like, so. Fucking Asian Jeff. Yeah, dude, so, he, so he, so he like, Jeff. yeah, so like he would help me out with like gear and like give me paint to play. And so I started playing with those guys, and we had a team called Karma. And this is just like super base level and then we would like play the local tournament series at badlands they would host it it was called shy town series okay and we would just play that local tournament series and then eventually like teams would would host tryouts and i would so i think like mm -hmm. the next big team i played for was called wise guys so there's like a ranking system so it goes like i don't know how it is today it's like you basically sign up and when you play tournaments it gives you points and ranking so like I, like right now I couldn't go play like a local tournament and just smash on people you know what I mean so you can't sandbag or whatever yeah so they were playing national tournaments which is like um, you know like the big boy tournaments but they were playing division three so I tried out for their team made it and then I started playing with them basically nice and then yeah you kind of just work your way through the divisions you know uh -huh. um, yeah so from, how long you been pro um, since 2017 oh dude so it's been a little bit of a ride now yeah uh, and i've played for three different teams so yeah it's been a little crazy why does that happen um so i i went pro with aftershock the local pro team from badlands yeah and then um how it goes i'd left it was just like going downhill like the, i guess you could say the ship was sinking kind of and they, they're actually not even a team anymore so I kind of just like jump ship when it was sinking, you know, yeah, and yeah. went to a team out in Fort Wayne and uh, it was called the Outlaws. And then I just didn't like how it was being run. And I just, you know, it just wasn't home for me. It just didn't fit right. So I left and then I play, I went back to semi-pro and played. So do you not time. have contracts or anything like that? Yeah, no, it wasn't that, you know, it's not that formal. Like there is teams that have big contracts, but all the teams I've played for are pretty, you know, we don't have the big budgets. Is there like is there that. one team that's like known as like the Cobra Kai type one where they're like just that they're the, they're definitely the corporate is, assholes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the, it's Impact. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> fuck you, Impact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to sign our boy Mike Kerr up, then <laughs> fucking fuck with us, dude. But you got to talk to Chunt. First, yeah, you talk dude. to me first. Impact. You better. You, oh my god, dude! I'm, I can't stand this. So, Do you even want to play for Impact? Dude? Yeah, it, it would be dope, actually. Yeah, yeah hell they yeah, probably pay, they pay the big bucks. Yeah, huh? yeah, you, yeah. You can make a living off of that. So this, that's it. This is the living right now, though. Yeah, I'm just riding out while I can. That's you know? so sick, dude. Yeah. What would you be doing if you weren't playing paintball right now? Who the fuck knows? Probably. You said you were fishing before. Yeah. So when I first moved down to Florida, I. You know, obviously needed to do something. So I, uh, I think it was before I moved down. Like um, my family member's neighbor, like took us out on like a little charter trip or whatever. Uh -huh. And I was like super into it. And I was like, man, I, you know, I'm gonna move down here because I knew he like took us out on a charter, but he was a commercial fisherman, so he would fish for like you know the market yeah. and uh, whatnot. So I was like, man, if you ever need like a deck hand, I'll come out. You know, I'll I'll work for free at first just to because I wanted to learn about it and like do it. I thought it was really cool so i ended up doing that and then i was his deckhand for a while and uh you know he started paying me whatever like tw like and then uh whatever how many percent nothing at first and then uh i eventually became you know his first mate and did that for about a year just commercial fishing rod mm -hmm. and reel mostly you know uh-huh just up before the sun comes up and not home till after it goes down out on the ocean every day. Damn, and dude, it was, you were a pirate, dude. It was brutal, that's you were for a sure. Fucking scallywagger, dude. <laughs> yeah. Any well, crazy ship stories, dude? Um, I mean, Nothing. you see badass shit out there, just sharks and dolphins, like hand feeding dolphins. It's crazy. Like dolphins act like at Sea World, you know what I mean? Like oh, like they known you. Yeah, like, like it's we had crazy. been friends. Like it's crazy. Yeah, you could like hand feed a dolphin in the wild, like put fish in its mouth dolphin are dolphin are smart why do you think we don't ever catch them well you can't so like when you hook on you like dolphin will grab your bait once in a while 
like just like anything else a shark or whatever you're not fishing for it yeah and it'll drag your line out and then you'll they always spit the hook like they somehow know how to spit it out it's wild like you Chad, can't haven't you heard of dolphin heiress we catch them all right yeah have you heard about that it's well, fun, dude. <laughs> that's what we have a clip of tara uh so we brought a bunch of dolphins out here into the desert we didn't do that shit yeah you're a part of it dude. i had a part of that American? shit chad Listen, chad dude. brought a bunch of dolphins out to the wow, desert absolutely chad. not dude yeah, dude can't don't believe you, you did hey, that don't you do that to me dude so don't you put that on we me, put dude. them out in the desert and they've just been croaking dude yeah, they, they can't they haven't adapted yet I guess it's so it's they, like valley fever or something that's going around. I you don't can't know. live in the desert. It's a fucking dude. It's the smartest animal in the sea, dude. Not the smartest animal in the desert, dude. Well, we can not domesticate smart enough to not be a dolphin heiress. Yeah, well, like blue whales. <laughs> we had tried in Atlanta to put a blue whale in a tank a couple of times. They just kept dying, man. I don't think they like to be in tanks, bro. Yeah, I think great whites are like the same way, I think, though. Right? Well, I've never seen one of those in They the can't cage, stop. Right? I think they need a lot of space. I don't yeah. think great whites ever stop moving or swimming. Is that true? Yeah, yeah they, they, they don't sleep or anything. They're always moving. Mm -hmm. Whoa, dude. They don't need to because they're great. Because they're beasts. They do shark shit. <laughs> yeah, all dude, day, yeah, every dude, day. Dude. Shark shit. Okay. Bro. So, I mean, for me, when I'm hearing everything you're telling me, man, it sounds like you just kind of jump in the water, dude. You're like a shark of your own environment, though. You just mm -hmm. went down to Florida, started, you got right on a ship. You know, that's some fucking movie shit, dude. Whatever, you know. How else do you get in this shit? Like Gatsby. Well, I mean, were you ever apprehensive about what you were doing? You can't, I guess when you can't just move back home. Well, yeah, well, I mean, it wasn't like the first time I was on a boat or anything. Like, I grew up on a boat. My dad always had boats. Okay. So I'm like, you know, I, I had my sea legs. Like, I knew what I was doing on a boat, and I enjoyed it. So it was like, it wasn't like I just jumped into it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I like... I grew up fishing and I grew up on boats just in a lake, not on an ocean. So, yeah, you know, it was definitely different. Did you but, finish high school? Yeah, I finished high school. Any college? Uh, I tr I went to Purdue Cal Community College for like a minute. And yeah. And then Wasn't did, for you. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I've gone back to college a couple of times. I'm not a big fan, dude. Well, they would like drop me out of classes for not showing up and I'm like I gotta go play paintball and shit I thought this was like <laughs> I thought this was like if I do my work and pass the test I'm good I didn't know I had to show up every day and yeah, yeah I never what understood attendance that, dude. dude didn't yeah. I pay you yeah. for this I'm like I, I I got kicked out of math class it was like 100% in the class I'm like I did all the homework half the shit's online anyways I don't even know why I'm coming here yeah I, I guess though from an employer's standpoint it's like when people say they've been to college whenever I hire someone I'm like cool man I guess that means you'll show up for your <laughs> days at work so you're actually I'm happy they didn't hold you uh, allow yeah. you to just skate by so you're out here how long are you out here for dude I'm um, just I fly out Monday fly out Monday so I got I fly out Monday back home and then i drive my van over to pennsylvania to play this tournament nice dude all right well hey we're running up on 28 minutes 40 seconds right now we usually take a a break at the 30 minute mark so let's wrap it up here and uh we'll be right back after a quick break cool mm. good work so far dude. brb that's shorthand for be right back homies or big Yo, right butt Keanu cleans his gutters, Keanu leaves. <laughs> and, and we back, and we back, and we back. I want to say something real quick. We're going to get into a story about how first our guest got struck by lightning and now he destroys all technology that comes in his path. That's second. First is um, how powerful of a tool 
social media can actually be because it's always like and I've gone through periods as well where I get off social media because I feel like it's like making my life worse you know mm -hmm. um, and it was really interesting because I, I reconnected with another old friend about a month ago as a result of social media right and he's like he's like hey man how are you doing and I'm like honestly dude I'm as good as my social media is like my social media is me doing cool stuff positive family friends you know things like that and like hobbies and all this cool stuff that i'm doing and traveling and it's like my social media is like this like page of just positivity and happiness well like currently that is my life my life is positivity and happiness dude like my my instagram right my my uh social media matches my my real life right now and that's a really good fucking feeling dude mm. and as a result of social media you and i reconnected because yeah. if, if you didn't post that thing with the little thing that said Avondale on it, how would I ever fucking know, dude? I don't know if I want that though, dude. When I sometimes when I read people's and it's sad, like I I'm right now I'm on my my Facebook and Instagram sabbatical. I didn't delete yeah. them, but they're just not on my phone. You yeah, know you what just I mean? delete the little app. You just delete it the does, app. It consumes you. you. Just click on yeah, it. I here. click on it, but for me, I love it, and I think you're using it the right way when you're reconnecting them with friends and stuff. Sometimes because I don't even post stuff. You know, so what the fuck am I doing on there? You're just dude? lurking. I'm You're just lurking. Lurk, but I'm like a fucking ninja, You're dude. You're just lurking around. I mean, that, I guess that's what it's for. I know too, what's happening with people. you, but you don't know what's going on with me at all times. Yeah, because I've thought about that before. I'm like, you can't really know what's going on with Anthony's life, but best believe he's in the shadows watching you. Yeah. Oh, hey, dude, how was that? The hey, bushes. How was brunch with your mom last Saturday? Oh, and I'll, I'll ask about it, dude. I'll talk about comments from your 2011 post over Ooh, there. Oh, damn. Yeah, that was a long, long no, but time but ago. I I sometimes when I see I, uh, people post sad stuff, man, I'm like, damn. Not that I'm like, come on, man, you can't be feeling that emotion. But I'm like, shit, maybe don't feel it here, though. You know, maybe yeah. call a friend or I think something. They're just looking dude. for Th support. Yeah, I Ooh. guess you can call it that. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends. I mean, it depends. It really can be used in so many positive ways, dude. Because like I'm a part of a group with like three thousand people on it, and like if you're you need help with anything. Oh yeah. You okay. You post, Sub you post it on there and it's like, all of a sudden you get just flooded with these solutions to your current issue. It's like, I'm having car troubles. I need help. Yeah. You know, and it's like, you can post this and like, there's just a group of good people that are like, Hey, yeah, we can help you. Yeah. I just like, I don't, I hate to hear sad news via Facebook, you know, yeah, like somebody true. would tell me and it's like, Oh man, I wish you would have just called. You know what I mean? Like, Chad, if I come to find out you're going through some shit and everyone on Facebook knows before your friends do, I'm going to be like, Chad, what the fuck are you doing? I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I would call you because that's how it goes. So, but, you, but I think what you're saying is right, though. It's like right now, things are going good in things the Chad are going Fredman good, department. Dude. Yeah, dude, life's really, really good right now. And I, th I don't know, man. I, it's, I just feel good. And I'm so what you're saying is you're not like sitting in Lambos trying to look all... You know? Right, or I'm not like I, I've made. I made a hundred people make a million dollars last year through this thing I sold on Amazon. I like that. Join dude. Buy my fit tea. Yeah. Hey, use code yeah. Chad ten for ten percent off. <laughs> Hit me up right now if you want to make fifty thousand dollars from home. Hey, not a pyramid. Hey, swipe up right now. Funnel. Swipe up right now if you want to be your own boss. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag entrepreneur. Yo, be careful being your own boss, man. Being your own boss is overrated, dude. Sometimes, you know, you might have to fire you, dude, and you don't want to do that. That's a tough conversation. Corrective to action have, conversation. Let me tell you how that conversation is going to go right now, okay? Go ahead. I'm going to get an email. Okay. From myself. Okay. And okay. Urgent. 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 <laughs> Sweating. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Chad, comma. And then you got to space a little bit. If you want to write a professional oh, email, God. Chad, comma, yeah. couple Indention. spaces, indent. Okay. If you could please come into the office at some point today, we, we have some. To talk. We need to talk. <sighs> Period. A couple more indentions. Sincerely, yourself. Yeah. Okay. I'm As gonna, human resources. At, at HR. So then, <laughs> okay. then I'm gonna see that email, right? Uh -huh. But I'm not gonna open it. I'm not gonna open the email. Okay. I'm just gonna small look, screen it. I'm gonna look at it Got from it. the side where it pops up, and I'm gonna. I already know right away. 
Uh-huh. I know right away, so I'm never going to open it. I'm never going to show up to the meeting. You're gone. I'm gone. I'm Dang, gone. I'm gone because dude. not only am I HR, okay, but I'm also the accountant. You know what? Okay? And I got I got all the codes, dude. You're the dude. CFO, too, I'm dude. the CFO, the CEO, the fucking ABCDO, dude. You're carte blanche dude. in those checks. I'm yeah, carte blanche everything, dude. And I'm going to be gone, bro. I'm going to be gone. And I'm going to leave a paper trail all the way to the Bahamas, bro. Non-extradition. Damn. Holler at me, dude. <laughs> I'm just going to be out there living my best life. I dude. feel like, yeah, you should just do that off the get. Damn, dude. Yeah, but I want to create, there's got to be a story, you know what yeah, I mean? I guess, me, yeah. to, me to me, you know what I'm saying? I dude? do know what you're saying. That's how it would go for me. I'm just saying, dude. If I was my own boss, dude, which someday I will. So this might actually It's a happen. slippery slope, dude. It's a slippery slope. That's all I was trying to say. So, Mike, tell us about the lightning strike, dude. Well, did I get into the van stuff yet? Did we talk about that? Oh, oh yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. So on break, we take them. We take our breaks. We have a conversation. Mike's telling us about the way he's living. And right now, Mike, you're living out of a, out of a what? What do you a call sprinter. it? A sprinter. A sprinter. sprinter. Damn, You know, I got dude. the little stage with the bed. Got some solar panels. Got the awning. Um, so, yeah, I spent a lot of time in the van. Just up in there. Just a man in the van. Yeah, you know. That whole van life thing, you know. Dude. <laughs> Hashtag home is where you park it. Yeah, home is where you park it. Um, what, dude? You know about the van life? Well, I follow this dude. dude. Okay. So, um, what he's referring to, yeah, we we're, I think it's like called like Silver Springs. It's in Florida. It's like a, it's like a uh, cold spring in Florida somewhere, like north, mm-hmm. like Ocala. I don't know if, if the listeners know about Florida, but, um, so I'm there and like camping there and I'm plugged in um, cause I have like RV plugins and uh, it's storming crazy bad. My awning's out and it's just like about to rip off the side of my van. So I'm like run out there in the rain and storming like crazy. And I'm like trying to put this awning back and like, yeah. I just get fucking shocked and sent right on my ass. I'm like, <laughs> oh fuck this. The awning can rip off. I'm out, I'm out of here. I just fucking dive back in the van. I'm like, holy shit. And then like all the power has gone out of the van. So I don't know if like, struck my van what happened at all but um damn dude you could end up like powder you remember that movie no i didn't okay all right we'll just keep pushing (laughs) david does i thought man i was gonna turn into powder yeah dude but um (laughs) so yeah and then i call the campsite because i'm like dude i think it just like fried my van like yeah and they're like oh no the whole park is just lost power or whatever i didn't like tell them what happened or anything so i was yeah, like oh cool yeah. so you could have got a fine or something <laughs> yeah. dude you were um, associated with that lightning yeah, I'm like, dude. Did I, did we just blow the whole fucking electricity at the whole place or what but you know everything was fine after that so. no it wasn't no it wasn't you fucking are like undetectable on electromagnetic devices nowadays dude <laughs> yeah i feel like it's always been like that i don't know that. oh pre-lightning strike yeah pre- so maybe the lightning strike was just a part of your powers yeah i don't know yeah what? it magneted towards me or whatever that yeah, was and word. that's when the third nipple grew right was after the lightning uh, nah, strike i was born with that well oh, that's okay. it's all part of the power dog yeah could be nipple yeah. power well th- but nip. you were telling us you can't get hooked up to the uh, oxygen reader on your finger or even the blood pressure machines at the hospitals well that was just one occurrence but yeah they couldn't read my vitals oh okay so that's like a whole another crazy story where i got this gnarly scar right here what is that story um i was skateboarding oh okay but that's why you were there was for that scar yeah it was bad okay okay was, yeah i needed to get stitched up what do you shit. do I was skateboarding with a beer bottle in my hand and Ollie down a glass beer bottle and hit a rock yeah, and fucking fell on it and it shit almost killed me. <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah. You almost got Just taken out in spraying. a silly way. Spraying yeah. blood. Yeah, sketch. Super sketch. Bad, yeah. Who was with you? Uh, my girlfriend at the time and I just was in a car accident so I had a rental car so I like made her, I was like down the street from my house made her run, get the car, hopped in it, fucking just a bunch of paper towels on my holding my arm. Closed. Did you leak all in the rental car? No, not too bad, surprisingly. Yeah. But um, yeah, and then just like walked into the emergency and they're like, "Oh, sit over here." I'm like, "No, nah. like you gotta do." You something gotta about expedite this, this bad <laughs> yeah. boy. Like took it off. They're like, "Oh shit!" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now all of a sudden y'all gonna do your motherfucking job on time? Yeah. Well, I'd always heard it's best to call the ambulance in situations like that, but you were you weren't doing it. No. 
you that's were expensive. Gone. Yeah, I hear you. I on didn't that. have health insurance at the time. Oh yeah, you just ducked those in, those health bills, man. That's what yeah, I'm, that's what I was taught, dude. I, I actually am still ducking that health bill. They, they <laughs> that were, one. So yeah, because like I'm like oh I didn't I was like I don't want an X ray like because my hand was working fine. I'm like just stitch it up, and like the nurse dude was like scared. He didn't like it was sketchy because he was like nervous. Yeah. Luckily, I was a little drunk, so I was like okay with it, taking pictures of it. They're on my Instagram. Fully composed. Um, yeah. I was Hitting like, on the nurses in front of your girlfriend and stuff. <laughs> and uh, he's like, oh, I got to ask the doctor, like whatever. So the doctor like walks into the doorway, not even in the room, and goes like, yeah, just flush it out. And I had to pay like a crazy like $1,000 doctor fee because the doctor like said three words. So yeah. I was like, fuck that. I'm not. That paying. doesn't seem fair. I'm like, I'm not paying that. I, I asked, feel like they I should have to for, ask you if you need that. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I was like, I don't want the x-ray. But the nurse guy was like scared and was like, I have to ask the doctor. And then like just the doctor saying those like three words charged me like another 1200 bucks or some shit. Well, dude, that's nuts as far as it goes. And you were saying you were having some, you, you seem to have a little bit of issues with electronics. Yeah. Maybe the phones, things like that. I might be reaching here, but you, you might be pushing off some energy dude who knows yeah some i mean it's warm in this room you all saw the video dude the mic stand just freaking pretty much broke dude and that's never happened before <laughs> swung and almost hit me in the face dude and then his too i mean i feel like that's kind of mechanical though right the mic stands maybe your powers well, far I mean, exceed when, what uh, we're exactly well, you're, when you're electromagnetic dude i don't even it know happened. if that's fucking right dude but all i know is shit's going haywire all well so sudden. you're living in a van yeah you got a girlfriend She's out in Indiana. Yeah. How long you been with her? Oh, geez. She's going to yell at me when she hears this. I don't know, like probably six months or something. Okay. So still kind of kind yeah, of new. It's kind of new. Still, How do y'all yeah. meet? Social media. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way to do it, even from the van. Yeah. Okay. You know, I got the cell phone. Yeah, we got coverage out here. No, dude. no Wi-Fi, but data. It's Sprint. It sucks. What's some don't things? Don't get Sprint. It's terrible. Mm. Okay. Well, that's good. Actually, hey. info for our <laughs> listeners yeah. there. You travel. You've been traveling around. Yeah. If you travel, sprints no good. Okay. So, what's some things that you needed in the van? So you started this expedition when? When did you start living in the van? Um, so I was renting a house with my roommate in Florida. So this is probably like middle of 2016. Oh, you've been at, you've been in that van for a while. Same one. Yeah. So I put, when I got it, it had 150,000 miles on it. Now it has like 270, Damn. pushing 300 almost. Did you name it? No. 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 No endearment I there. feel like, yeah, it would break down if I named it. Okay. Mm, that's good. That makes sense. I always name it. I don't want to get too attached. And then so I'm, what's some things in the van that, I, if I was going on the van life, like I, I feel like, okay, I'm going to need some toilet paper. I'm going to need yeah. some converters of some sort, you know, to charge yeah. charge some stuff. Is there anything you're gonna else? Need, you're going to need a gym membership. To because, a national gym. Yeah, that's all over because that's like anytime shower, you know, you could get in. Oh, dude. You know, you got to shower and stuff, so that helps. That's like your water bill, dude. Yeah, exactly. And then plus it makes you healthy. If you got a shower, you might as well push out a few reps while you're there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get some gains in yeah, there, dude. Yeah, exactly. Where you got a membership to? Is it LA Fitness? No, nah, Planet, which... You know, they don't got real squat racks and stuff, but they're, there's literally a Planet Fitness 20 minutes from anywhere you're at. How's their showers? Pretty good. Yeah. There's this one in Wisconsin, like by my buddy Happy's, like I was talking about. Yeah. In like Madison. Uh huh. Dude, they got like the the water that comes out of the walls and shit too. Oh, what, dude? Yeah. That's, I, I've like, never showered in one of those. Yeah, it's got like the big square shower head so it's like you know like water falling onto you and then they spray out of the walls what too. an experience yeah you ain't yeah. gonna get that at la fitness bro you get LA i mean fitness, you get those weird fucking calcified what? just like oh yeah it like comes out like really weird dude you're like oh yeah it's like kind of spitting out i mean you get those too it all depends they're all different yeah it's a mixed bag yeah, i know yeah. the one here dude not only do they do pizza parties on fridays or the first friday of the month or something but also you can get one of those hydro bed oh, massages yeah. hydro massage you know yeah they free tootsie roll and shit you know oh, that's why like uh, you know Planet Fitness is always getting made fun of yeah pizza like bagels you know so you could 
Yo, it's worth dude. it's worth the twenty bucks a month for sure. That ain't bad at all. That's Sp- cheaper sponsor me, Planet fucking, Fitness. Planet Fitness, hey, dude. Up, Mike dude. Kerr, M I K E R R. Straight up, dude. We need to reach out to them because you're constantly fucking giving them free advertising. Right? I've on been fucking to social Planet media, Fitness dude. in Hawaii. I've probably been to over a hundred different. We'll Planet see if Fitness. we can set that connection up, dude. Yeah, right. Get Mister Fitness on the phone, dude. <laughs> David, that's your job. I feel like Cap. on it. Yeah, yeah, he's you. on it right now. He's gonna take yeah, care Jamie, of it. Yeah, Jamie, we need that. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, that's Jamie. Our Jamie for sure, dude. Hey, it what uh, Jamie, dude. What else? Uh, what else in the van? Um, Anything big? I mean, if I could go back, I'd definitely get like hand pump water because I have a generator, but can't get it running right now. So like, it's super minimal. I don't have a bathroom or anything. Yeah. You know, you end up pissing in water bottles and shit. A little less gra- glamorous than it looks on the Instagram. No you know, glam and glitz, dude. Yeah. It could be cold. You just blankets, you know, whatever. Dude, you're you're full roughnecking it. Sometimes. Sometimes. You know, and if it's not possible, you just got to hopefully your homie lets you crash on the couch or something. Yeah, be a good friend, dude. Well, I feel like a guy like you, you, you could sleep on the couch. But, you know, when I needed to sleep on the couch, I... They shouldn't have let me sleep on the couch, you know. Well, you can't be like guy on the couch from like half baked or something, you know. See, I just try out. You come home and I'm cooking, yeah. you know, doing mm. weird stuff, dude. I'm stealing your jewelry. I got the <laughs> robe on. I got your your robe on. Yeah, mm. yeah. this is nice. Got dude. the fine china out. Ooh, I'm wearing like, your like, wife's thong, <laughs> dude. You know, Dang, bro, Chad. you can't stop me, dude. Dang. Well, so talk to me a little bit about your mental health. I know I had asked you a little bit about that because for me. I know that I'm living the full American specialty package, dude. I got the house, I got the dog, yeah. I got a wife, I got a baby on the way. Wow, okay, yeah, congratulations. Dude. Thank you so much, dude. And uh, you know, it's a beautiful thing, but there's absolutely stress that comes with it. But I look at like your deal, not that, uh, you know, I had never wanted to live on the road, but when I think about it, I'm like, man, that's probably a pretty, pretty manageable lifestyle what do you think um i mean yeah as long as you have the means to do it and whatever I, like i like i told you earlier it's i'm gonna do it while i can you know yeah so i still stress about the you know things like that like damn should i get a house should i uh-huh. you know settle down and whatnot but you know i'm just gonna keep putting that adulting stuff off as long as i can well hell yeah i could do that once i you know once whenever. you're what i don't know 35 <laughs> Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try to squeeze out another 10 years. There you go, dude. Skate. How does it work the, with your girlfriend if you're on the road constantly? Well, I guess I've been in Michigan City a lot recently, you know what I mean? Yeah. But she's been cool about me, you know, because she knows I travel for paintball. So even if I wasn't in the van, mm-hmm. like I've been staying with her a lot, but even if I wasn't in the van, I'd be traveling a lot for paintball. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it. she's not, you know crazy about it but it's it's working so far so far so good yeah well as far as your mental health goes aside from the gym because you had said the gym you got any spiritual practices um not really you know no? uh, my my religions just uh be excellent to each other yeah you know where'd you pick that up from you know bill and ted yeah hey. <laughs> <laughs> keanu sleeves yeah, over here yeah. dude yeah. <laughs> the bill and ted on yeah. us dude Everybody love everybody. Everybody love everybody. That was yeah. uh, Will Ferrell. Right? Yeah, and uh, Semi Pro. Yeah, oh my god. Fourth place, dude. Fourth that was place. underrated, dude. Yeah. I thought that, that was a good best. one. All right, so but is that sort of just been it? Like you didn't go through a phase where you sucked? Oh, for sure. I mean, you know what I mean. I probably drink too much, like, a lot, but yeah, it hasn't got me in too much trouble yet, especially with my lifestyle. You know. Yeah, I'm any, not, I'm not any DUIs work. in the van? I got a DUI. No, never. I That would suck. You know, I'd get evicted then, basically. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> dude. They take your house, dude. That's everything <laughs> I own the in there. <laughs> notice and it's like skirt to the next city. Damn, you know, dude, you can't me. tow this thing. Actually, I was, I was like parking outside my girlfriend's house and like they put a warning ticket on. like, you can't park here anymore. And I like called the guy or called the cop and he was like, that's an RV you can't park it. I'm like, I'm not staying right there. I'm like in my girlfriend's house. That's just like my daily driver. That's what I drive. He's like, can't park it on public streets. So like, I don't know where I'm going to park when I get back. But. Damn, dude. <laughs> Discriminating they, on your yeah, home, Yeah, man. Dude. Van life's not a crime. Dude, the van life is a struggle right now, <laughs> dude. Well, that's nuts. I, I mean, 
I was going somewhere. I, I know when you were talking about it, it's like you, you're going back and forth. You're feeling it out. You said you picked up. You drinking a little bit too much. You did. You said you did get a DUI. Yeah, that was like when I was 18, and it was for weed. I was. It was bogus. Yeah. Yeah. What state were you in then? Illinois. They'll get you out there. Yeah, they're crazy about mm-hmm. that stuff. Illinois, you mean? Yeah, Illinois. <laughs> it was in Beecher, Illinois, right by the Badlands. And we were being pretty dumb, though. It was me and Robbie. Oh, we're, Robbie we're, Ryder, dude. I hope he listens to this, dude. We were smoking a double perk bong in the car. Oh, mm-hmm. my. In the Young Blaze, dude? No. It was, uh. it was in. It was, I was being really dumb, young and dumb. Uh, it was in my dad's work truck, so that was bad. No, got him into Yo. trouble. Where were the dads at? Like uh, me going into fatherhood, my son's coming up and he's looking like he's going to, I'll know that he's going to be like, you'll have those tendencies where it's like, oh, I'm he's sure going to be a sweet knew, smoker. Yeah. You're it's not like, going to know shit. Oh man, I hope I do. But it's like, at least have a conversation with like, hey, maybe leave the bongs not in the car. Yeah. You know, like maybe don't take the bong in the car. Maybe just smoke things like blunts. Oh yeah, dad. I'll just leave them here so you can find them. Okay. Yeah. Whatever, Dave. Yeah, literally in a backpack, just a full blown percolator. You were, oh, dude, your pops knows we were blazing in that yeah, little apartment. Dude. For sure, he's just like I don't know. I mean, that was like the time when it was like, all right, you got in trouble. Now it's now we're strict. not playing anymore. Yeah, yeah. Before it was like as long as you're not, you know. I felt like it was he just didn't want confrontation. It was kind of just like as long as you're not getting in trouble, getting your schoolwork done, whatever. It's good. It's fine. It's kosher. Your but yeah, but thong, dude. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, so here's the ideology of the podcast. When Chad pitched it to us, it was like, hey, man, I think we got a solid friend group. We seem to have these positive people around us that give us good insight and give us good feedback and kind of push us in a good direction. You know, when you're saying be excellent to each other, um, it's kind of just like a state of mind. And I know it might have been silly, but I think that, you know, there was some cogency underneath there is kind of your mindset, at least in talking. You don't seem like... Uh, a con man or you don't seem like uh, you know you, you're an honest guy even when I was embellishing on your electromagnetic abilities you corrected me to let me know it was an isolated incident yeah. you know? <laughs> and so what I would say though is a lot of the times what we like to do is take a person and kind of have them give us some of their their wisdom you know what I mean? And so for you, I don't know if you've ever sat down and been like, man, this is what I've learned at this point. This is what I'm thinking. But maybe for some of our listeners, it's like, to me, you sound like a dude who fell in love with paintball and you found a passion and now you're out there getting it, dude. Like you're not just, uh, you didn't just pick up a job at the Walgreens and it's been 18 years now. You know what I mean? You've been out going and chasing after it. And then you must like the wilderness. Look at David Scott Bill and Ted. <laughs> you must like the wilderness and things like that because you're out there in a van, man. Like yeah. who takes a fucking leap to buy a van and live in it? I That's like some Alex Holland stuff that you're doing. Or Honold, dude. Honold, yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. Some weird, uh, some weird foreign things to me. So, kind of tell me where what, what the ethos is for Mike Kerr. Um. All right. I mean, shit. I just I was lucky enough to get the means to do it. Uh huh. Partly because my dad passing away. Okay. Inheriting inheritance. So I've just been trying to make you know good decisions with my money and invest and you know do these good things or make the right decisions with the money. Yeah. And then, so I have the means to, you know, do this cool shit, Uh fucking chase my dreams. Yeah. So it's basically like, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to not work nine to five as long as I possibly can. Yeah. And, you know, whatever, like, I guess like a lesson that could be learned is like, you know, my dad is out there. He gets killed at work. Uh He's should be almost retired. You know what I mean? He's a general foreman. He shouldn't be working even. And he was just like a workaholic, you know, working his life away. You know what I mean? It's like, and then you die at work. It's like, I don't, I didn't want to do that. You know what I mean? I didn't, I wanted to fucking do shit I love to do. You know what I mean? Uh Like he always wanted to be on his boat and boating and shit. It's like, you know, I, I understand, you know, you got to go out there and work and make a living and fucking get by. But also, like, you know, don't fucking work your life away. Don't squander it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just, you know, you got to do shit you love to do. You know, you got to fucking be passionate about something. 
I feel like too many people don't do anything they're passionate about. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, dude. They're just like, go to work, hang out, whatever, drink at the bar. You know what I mean? You got to find something you love and fucking chase it. Um, you know, and that's how I stay busy and just like always in the gym working towards that goal, you know? Yeah. We got to make that. We got to bridge that, though. It's like, how do I find something that I love? And it's been my experience is that like I just one day ended up at a rock climbing gym. Yeah. And I fucking fell in love dude i was like this is amazing it was something i always wanted to do for you you started paintballing at a young age and it just happened because like i can i can imagine someone hearing this and going like well i don't fucking have something i love i don't know how to find something i love and it's like you just got to go out and start doing shit Well, exactly you like you talked about earlier like oh you're just diving into fishing you're diving into that like fuck i want to you know i don't you gotta like do that you know what I mean try some shit you gotta just yeah try new things like fucking rock climbing today that shit was hard as fuck but yeah it's fun and like I've seen it done being done and it's like man that's cool like yeah I'll fucking go to the rock climbing gym that sounds fun yeah you know what I mean it's like obviously it's not always like that but whatever you know I don't want to fucking die not doing anything cool yeah no that's a that's a hundred percent I mean for me I know that my work is a lot. I work a lot, dude. Yeah. I probably once I cut that phone on, ooh, I got eight missed calls. Yeah, you know damn. what I mean. But what I would say is this: is it's been a goal of mine to create an atmosphere where my work can uh, kind of fund the things that I enjoy. Yeah, right? and whether it be my friends and fantasy football, or getting together, or doing things like that, or going out, or me and my wife travel, or we see our family. I don't know. We're kind of simple people, but I think what you're saying is really powerful in the fact that like don't get lost in the mundane nonsense. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I mean, I'm super as like bad as stuff has happened for me. I'm super blessed on yeah. top of it to be able to do this shit and like you know have that time to like try to make my passions, you know, my job as well. Yeah. Dude, that's yeah. rad, man. That's mm-hmm. rad. Well, I, I'll tell you what, man. This hour has flown by, dude. Yeah, I could, we could talk. Yeah, we could do a 50 hour, dude. This <laughs> yeah. is a marathon in this sweat box. Yeah, dude. right. Hot, I wish that hot our podcasting. viewers could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, I wish our viewers could feel what it feels like in here, man. We're on the, we're on the it, opening it stage. It feels like it's outside. Yeah, it's 109 we degrees just, yeah, outside just right set now. Set up in the backyard right, or something. Yeah, we should have. We should have just yeah, around right a fire middle. pit or some shit. Just really sweat it up. Yeah, wear fucking trash bags, dude. <laughs> sauna but, suits. Yeah, dude. sauna suits, dude. Vaseline. Made out of hefty well, and then, black and, bag. And then afterwards, you got a shower. You might as well push out a few reps while you're there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we could definitely top Joe Rogan. He's always in the sauna. We'll just do the podcast in the in sauna. The yeah, sauna yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot got, times, dude. Yeah, he's got nothing on that, dude. Yeah. Hot we'll podcast. Crank that bitch up to 220, yeah, dude. Yeah, just sit there. Damn, I just hit a mean pun. So, thank you, dude. Yeah, thank thanks you for, for having coming me. In now. And I know it's been I'm, awesome meeting you guys. It's been it's been sweet. Yeah, next time you're in AZ, dude, you got to oh, come yeah. by as much. as Oh yeah, uh, believe that, like. dude. We're gonna plan ahead and do some dope shit. Yeah, man. I'll bring your I'll, wife's thong, dude. <laughs> your wife's thong, dude. <laughs> the only couple's couch I ever slept on, his. Oh damn. Mm-hmm. Damn. Um, you know the only saying? wife you've been around. Yours. No, dude. Yours, dude. Yours. I've slept on your couch. You guys know how much I love your couch. I'm going to go home and make Becca count her thongs. Yeah, yeah, you better go and do that, dude. Well, hey, man, follow us on Instagram at Last Week Out, YouTube, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, whatever, Google Play. We're on there. We got the videos, dude. Again, you can fo- follow Mr. Mikey Kerr over here at Mike Kerr 04. It's mashed together. It's mashed M-I-K-E-R-R-04. Together. Yeah, baby. Taking it back to 2004, bro. Okay, bye. Love you. Yeah, bye, guys. Peace out.